Start by opening six. Case number six. <laughs> Megan, open the case. What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo. And today we have a very special video. And from now on, I'm going to say it because it is always very special because we are in the top six once a year, every year. For the last three years, we have had a list, an advent calendar of top 20 players of each year. And so of in those three years, well, there's only been 18 players in the top six in total so yeah math makes it a little awkward when um i'm talking about top six but there are these are some of the this is the deadliest top six okay of any of these years all right so who is it who is it well this is uh one of two players from a country that would otherwise get no shine but is now on the map in a big way this is a player who is in my opinion best in role and maybe best in role in history he's a player who played on two different teams this year he's a player who is is a, is a charming player i think he'll be a broadcast talent one day an analyst caster honestly he's coming for someone's job and uh, but hopefully this player stays as a player for many more years because he has only been pro for a short amount of time okay you guys like let's be real you guys know exactly you guys know how i feel about this player it's yakinder yakinder my number six player of 2022 my opinion uh the best pure entry fragger in the world maybe the best that uh, we've ever seen really in csgo i think nico in some ways actually keeps up with those stats and elite players like simple and zai will also challenge those stats on top of being good at everything else right but um yakinder when we talk about a guy who first of all can completely take over the game from his role a guy who is the most dedicated to his craft as an entry fragger i can't think of anybody that fits the you open the dictionary for entry fragger photo of yakinder you google entry yakinder's top result you ask uh apex who's who the best entry is he's going to say yakinder you know this guy is synonymous with uh entry right now and i think that is really cool with him he's also somebody who i think has shown his range by going to a new roster and making that roster better Cre not only does he bring impact but he creates space as an entry that's the special unique uh, ability that an entry has as especially as a star so when your kinder joins liquid well you'd say oh no a liege and your kinder well what's going to happen there well it looks like they've split up roles almost perfectly he is uh coming in to vertigo helping you uh, out with the opening frags he's dominating on inferno um over on on banana to help out a and alleviate some of that stress because a even though he was comfortable with the aggressive rifling him doing it every single round was not working it was not working it was probably not comfortable for him um and every place that they've been moved around, Yakinder has only added and allowed Elish to continue to do it as much as he wants on a different part of a map or splitting up the duties 50-50. And it's just created a great situation. Yakinder has also clearly improved the team. The team is T sides have improved massively since Daps and Yakinder have joined. Um, they put in a ton of work in that regard. I think seriously i feel like their only problems at this point are psychological they have a roster okay no actually my my biggest problem with liquid i know this is about your kinder top 6 2020 my biggest problem with liquid is that oc is the fourth best player on this team i think oc is i think oc is excellent i think he has all the markings of an elite opera straight up i think he's as fast as all the elite operas this guy knows it has a nade lineup for every single position i haven't seen him really miss nades seems like a nice guy Maybe he shouldn't be so nice. Maybe that's his problem. He hits hard shots. He hits really hard shots. Very smart in clutch rounds. Dude, I have nothing bad to say about him except his initiative on the, you know, the what are the what's that graph called? That's like a like a spider spider graph. Bro, OC's, you know, on this, it's like all like this, except for his initiative. It's like this, you know? And my face is the point in the middle. He needs to take more initiative, and maybe it feels suffocating ironically to be on a team with yakinder and, and Elige because they're taking all of the initiative 
all of the initiative liberties. They're out there. They're going out there more than everyone else. So it feels like, well, you can't join them because the team's too aggressive. I don't know, man, but he needs to get out there a little bit more. And it feels like he's not being worked with enough. That's what I feel. I feel like if you look at like Monacy, for example, we talk about his, him improving over the course of G2. He improved com- throughout the year. He's obviously a one in a million player and is, will improve no matter who he's playing with. I guarantee you that. But apparently Nico's been working with them throughout the year. He's worked with Hooksy and he had to play with the, he played with uh, Alexi B at the first half of the year. He's had a lot of really big tier one players to play with throughout the year. And his initiative has improved drastically in this year. Just look at his CT demos, CT Inferno demos from the beginning of the year to now, and you'll see that. I don't see that with OC, and I don't know why. This isn't about OC. This is about your kinder. And and even though OC is the fourth best player on Liquid, Liquid are clearly the best they've been since 2019. Your kinder is adding to this roster. He also showed that he could be himself on Outsiders and on, on this you know random international team, that NA team, and still not only fit in and get his stats, but clearly the team improves behind it. I think that seeks volumes about Yakinder. So Yakinder's one of my favorite players, everyone's favorite player to watch right now, one of them. Um, and I wanted to take this time to watch him play Anubis. <laughs> Played it three times. He had a bad time two times, but his last game, which you're going to watch uh, versus OG, he had his best performance. And it wants to talk about both CT and T side. And I just want an excuse to watch an Adumas demo. If you want to see more Adumas demos, let me know. Because I will watch those. So just let me know in the comments. I'll watch those, man. Say less. I'm going to watch it. Just tell me. Say anything. Say A. And I'll literally pull up Anubis demos for whoever's left in the top five. But I won't spoil who. But say they were at the world final. Which maybe they were, maybe they weren't. Even though mostly elite teams were there. Then... um we might be able to pull up an Anubis demo on behalf of that player. But, hey, I'll probably be bottle service and, you know. But I would like to say I'm looking forward to Anubis demos. And if you would like me to watch an Anubis demo, you leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, let's get into the bro. Wow, what a better place to start than Anubis for your kinder. The player who had some of the worst Anubis stats for a star player that we've seen so far. Except in this game. 21 and 15, 1.43 rating versus OG. And the ch- it was a time where I talked to Fiku, and he said that they felt like they were the best Anubis team. Of course, Dexter had that massive 40 kill game versus Heroic. But it, basically, they got put in their place a little bit here by Liquid. And Yakinder had a much better performance in this matchup, getting much more comfortable on the map. We can see the aim is already really good we saw some great pre-aims even versus phase clan on a brand new map where the hell are we guys this is anubis okay so what are we looking at on tt side well uh he is responsible for ramsey it's this area down here hold on context time why i started calling this ramsey is because there's a sign on front of this okay and i think chad wanted to call it dark not that dark it's connor wanted to call it cave not really a cave I was going to call it electric because it just has the electric. But then Connor said there's a sign on the front of this that says Temple of Raw. And then I said, made a Gordon Ramsay joke. It's fucking raw. And then we were idiot sandwich, raw, whatever, the whole game. And then I was like, Ramsay's, because it sounds like Ramsay's, who I don't know who it is, but it's someone from Egypt that I know for sure. And then I thought Ramsay would be a really good name. So I started calling her Ramsay. Um, I don't know if that's going to catch on or not, but I love it. It's raw. Okay. It's the temple of raw, raw of raw. They'd be rolling in their graves if they heard this. Okay. So what is this area all about? Also, I want to call it kinder, the, the pillar behind you kinder right now. I want to call that your kinder because. Or like Yeki Pillar or something because he got some magical multis from this position, basically fighting both into Ramsey and towards. Listen, you're watching demos on my channel. I'm going to be saying Ramsey, okay? I actually don't know what a better name is if you have a better name. I don't know what's popping off right now. Okay, this pillar. Your kinder pushing here, B main. But look, look how he uses this, basically. It keeps his back to the wall. 
And the whole point right now of this area we're going to talk about on the mini-map, okay? I just want to wait for an opportune moment. Oh, this is going to be beautiful for him. Yeah. His back still here to the pillar. No fight. Separates the engagements perfectly. As of, you know, three days of Anubis. Three, four, five days of Anubis. However many games it was played in at the World Final. Yakinder was one of the best at that, using that pillar. <laughs> That's what we learned for sure. And I feel like knowing him, based on knowing him, it's probably going to continue to be the best. B site, Ramsey right here. Yeki pillar, okay. B main, okay. So one of the early mistakes that it looks like people are making right now is challenging B main early, too early. If you have this position, you have jail, you have the obelisk or default, you have glizzy. That's sticking too. Shout out to Rushley for that one. Everything here is way too strong, and the ops are really, really strong back here as well. So you kind of you need to make sure you have some kind of pressure here. Otherwise, you don't really attack B main. And sometimes these CTs are pushing B main aggressively. So waiting out here, even with heavy numbers, is good too. From what we've seen so far, everything's from what we've seen so far. But you don't really kind of cross this line that early. Unless you got some tricky things coming up. But if you put pressure here then the site's a whole lot weaker, but it's actually very hard to get to this. There's a lot of CT control grenades. We're going to see liquid smoke down here. We're going to see, not all the time, they might push. I think most of the time they're not pushing. FaZe are doing a good job of pushing with ROPs on this side. And they're not really pushing bridge that often as well, but Elise sometimes will be able to see down from the bridge and into, this, into the canals area and put pressure here to make sure that they can't take over Ramsey. This is the most important part of the map right now. Uh, where it's kind of mid to be, it's mid, it's even for the vantage points of the CTs, if they get comfortable here, just seeing all the way through canals, cutting off the middle for the Ts. It's a very key area. So we're actually seeing Liquid double up a couple of times and pushing out early and fanning the smoke. And this early kill we saw versus FaZe, where Yakinder was on T side trying to get into canals and getting bodied by phase rops was throwing a nade from the a site through the window and it was hitting you kinder down to 50 60 hp every round and then he was getting peaked by rain inside of ramsey and dying right away so i think they learned a lot from that phase game as to just how much to overemphasize mid it's almost like you can't overemphasize it too much and this smoke of course this is just a lot like i mean it could just be called connector right b connector connector um, but it does remind me a lot of like kind of Mirage Connector where on CD side you're fighting with it, you're fighting over it, but it's like being looked at all the time from every angle. Very important high frag location on the map. People are always trying to walk up to it. We're seeing the CT angles that are being taken inside of Ramsey be a little bit deeper as well. Like open to the doorway, not really flat angle against the wall waiting. At least not from what we've seen so far. Wow, jump spotting the default pillar obelisks to see out. That's interesting. If they, obviously, if they swung on your kinder, you'd be dead, but they, they don't know that, you, that this is being spotted in this way. Still a bit risky, I feel like, but... I think that Molly's a little late, because he can counter now. Ah, uh, well, okay. It's not late in the sense they throw it just in time for the smoke to come up, but obviously seeing your kinder with the smoke in hand, it's feeling pretty obvious. So we see exactly that round boils down to them trying to put pressure on this one area after winning mid super late and then going into a B split. It's a bit obvious, but right now it's liquid at this point in the Blast World final have the most experience so far on the map. And again, your kinder very good on these angles. Remember, if you molly nice and deep like this, you can peek behind it. Like, we just see right here. And what happens if you don't use, if you don't uh, put enough pressure on the CTs, they hold their nades too long. Like we saw you can do with the molly. So that's why even though there's more time on the clock than there is kind of available utility to delay, if you, if the map goes too quiet and people hold grenades long enough, it doesn't matter, right? Because they won't use that utility. That's an important spot that Neofrag played inside of Canals as well. And your Kinder, you know, he's obviously going to get 
more and more nosy as the rounds go on if he's finding win success and everything and that is the huge value of course of having control right there because of ramsey because you can see into mid you can see the stairs you can see the cr late rotations oh you saw that jump out towards jail and you get some more good damage so basically two kills around with the amount of damage we're going to look at the CT side or the T side as well. It is the first ever Anubis demo on this channel. What's crazy to me is it feel it, I, I, we don't know for sure, but it feels like people are already good at the map. Like I guess you should have expected people to get very good at something brand new really quickly. Um, but at the same time, like this map will change and develop a lot. But it already feels like people have translated some good fundamentals. We're already seeing some utility getting used very consistently. We'll see how much it go, how much it changes when we get into the new season. Uh, the blast fall, blast spring groups will start around January 15, something like that, and we'll certainly get more Anubis. The amount of times it's popping up the veto, the amount of teams that are confident playing the map. Oh, that's a nice find for you, Flamesy. I would have liked to see that position work a little bit better. Liquid haven't been opping here in B. That was another thing that FaZe did with Twist opping. Uh, mostly B main, but opping B. Because that the same angles we see a Kinder push into, into mid and canals, uh, ops are even better. So that nade again is for the same lurk that your Kinder would use on T side, and we'll see on T side how he plays it. What we saw on T-side versus FaZe was that FaZe were much better at controlling mid, so Yukinder was just useless. He was just dying. He was just dying inside of mid. You feel something fast is coming. I wonder if he heard a step outside of B. I thought I may have as well, actually. So immediate resmoke as well, and now he might go search. Especially if you think that you heard something, but you're not sure. Good opportunity to ask for a flash to try to peek. Maybe he just... Oh, he hears the eagles as well. Okay, might be an Antico. See some sick angles being held here. Not quite. Make sure to clear very deep and... Okay. Okay, now you can hear him running. The whole way as well. Really early footsteps. I think two pairs... And see these are the early nades i was talking about like, he's not going to use unless he thinks there's going to be a rush and i could feel it like that there may have been a rush coming as well but on antiquos uh better to use all your nades too early than to never use them right earlier is better than later <laughs> okay so they were trying it nope one more sequence for the road nope not going to be the case okay well, that's the, the CT side for Liquid, dominating OG, who didn't put enough good pressure on mid, didn't deal with Gukinder, get him out of his position, didn't set themselves up for enough uh, B splits. So at this position right here, you see the nade, the window in front of Gukinder on the top there. That's where Rops is throwing a nade over, lands right on the stairs, and Gukinder would jump out like this, and then try to challenge early into Ramsey, but the player in Ramsey who was Rain in the phase match, normally they would just have it smoked or he wouldn't even die. He wouldn't have a chance to even get that shot off. And then all that would happen is they would start the round off with one player low. But we'll see what they can do right now with this control. Uh, another thing I want to point out that it, it, it's really good to have players play both, both the same positions on CD side and T side. And what I mean by that is on CT side, we have Yakinder playing Ramsey. On the T side, we have Yakinder attacking Ramsey, right? So he knows what he's good at when it comes to how to play this spot. And so he knows what the weaknesses are when it comes to how to play this spot. Also, you get a better feel for how do you play your CT side if you start to find different ways to leverage on the T side. So you want to you want to play banana on Inferno. Maybe it'll be good for you to be banana defaulter on T side. You know all the tips and tricks. You know all the strengths and weaknesses. You know all the best angles. Now this one, I think this one's unfortunate for OG because 
Kinder gets damage, gets away, and Nafli gets a kill, and then it's a very late mid round. I think Nafli pulls off something really good here. So let's see if this is the case. Neofrag, 1v2. Actually, no, not enough time, is there? Okay. I think he had a good clash, though. So right there, uh, with it being smoked. A little bit awkward here for OG to have everything smoked at the beginning of the rounds. That feels like a... Might be a little bit of a waste of utility. But... They're, they're actually going to go through it. Wow. That's a huge call out. Just seeing no one's pushed. That was a fast shot from Neofrag. What the hell? I don't think he has shadow from that position either. Okay. And they're not nading here on the stairs as well. Looking for any tricky one ways is obviously a big thing. There's a million one ways on this map now. The amount of computational power coming into this. If you guys are reading, are you guys reading three body problem? It's sort of like the, the original computer they made out of millions of humans. When you look at CS today, you have so many people who all have YouTube channels and then pro players who are getting paid $40,000 a month. They are all working together to try to figure out a map as fast as possible. And the thing is that before I'd be like, yeah, you have to see after a couple of years, they'll figure it out. But today the computational manpower is so high that they, I, yeah, I feel like we're going to find stuff out in on Anubis that we're going to use for years in the first few weeks. I, I have that much faith in how many people there are working on this who have 10,000 hours plus in Counter-Strike uh, or just straight up pro teams that are searching every day for the best. Because, yes, this map's been out for two years. I judged it in the map core contest in 2020. It was my number one map. I definitely knew, knew about it. I knew it was good. But it, well, now that it's... Now that it's open for everybody to play it and are forced to play it, now they're going to play it for money, things have changed a little bit. Now I'm kind of putting more value on every single thing we find. I like the callouts on A as well. Can we talk about one more thing here on A? People are not pushing here. Weave, where where Nexa is. People are not pushing here, in my opinion, enough. I think there should be an op on this angle like every single round. Like it's like a B push on upper dark on dust two, but at the same time, it's less risky and more impactful, I think. But oppers, we see Brokey playing here, waiting to get mollied, then he smokes it out, then he drops onto lower plat, then he ops off this side of the pillar. And it's kind of like, okay, you're trying to push them off this position. I think all the best spots on A are out here right now. When I've seen some players play in A, Nitro's actually quite good at it. Rops is not good at it. Um, but he is good. Rops is really good at pushing, for example. So I think a lot of the best push angles and stuff, most comfort is out here. Um, and people feel like it's kind of hard to fight for, but an op is a good place to start. Also, auto sniper. Auto sniper here. Not even joking anymore. Five bullet op. Why not get the auto and sit here? Insta graffiti. So I think people should be trying to push A and call out people for not pushing A a lot. Now this is an interesting round because it's quite quiet. No one in mid control and the T's ready to B split. So like we're, could could be ready to B split any second. And I say that just because canals control, plus they can walk up to it. No one smoked. Oh, it's an anti. Okay, that makes way more sense. Like, why is there no pressure on the map? Hmm. Oh, all they did was peel back and wait for any kind of push, and then it came. Well, here's that B split again. Okay, this could be a cool one. OC watching from way back. Oh, 
Takes a shot from way far back as well. And that's a free kill. Oh, Fiku goes down. You're getting there. Oh my God, you're getting there. He's an animal. Stop him. You know, if you have two players in that spot, you don't really think you need to rotate too early. So that's going to be probably match point now. And you can just on the hunt. Searching at all these angles that doesn't that don't really exist right now. Of course I'm I just want to see you kinder preem an angle that doesn't exist. Okay. There it is. Wow. Insane. That must have looked absolutely ridiculous from Nexus me. He got Dexter as well. Okay, I'm I'm not. That's fine. Unlucky. The Thomas is really underrated weapon. It's actually quite good, especially at range. Whoever hates on it, whoever preyed on its downfall, you lost. Wouldn't be me. A new map to analyze, dude. I I actually did use your Kinder um, here on my list in the Laos top twenty of twenty twenty two to do an Anubis demo. How slimy of me. Yakinder, my number six twenty, number six player of 2022. I hope you enjoyed that demo and I want you to let me know who you think number five is going to be and if we should do more Anubis demos with the players who are left in case they were there at the world final, which I wouldn't say that if they were or weren't. But in, uh, let's say theoretically then, would we want to? What do you think? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.